It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Daniel Michael Traub. He's the Vice President of Method Procurement Technologies. He's a pro technology, a procurement technology expert. God, that might be a new word, a pro technology, procurement technology expert, software entrepreneur, dad, husband, and weekend racer because he's a Hoosier from Indiana. He likes that Indy 500. Widely regarded as an expert on procurement technology and process optimization, his experience spans over 25 years. Prior to joining Method, Dan founded a procurement analytics provider, led one of the nation's first e-procurement programs in higher education, and held leadership roles with Ernest Young, Capgemini, and Jagger. As part of the founding team at Method Procurement, he's directing their product strategy and bringing a comprehensive solution to revolutionize spend management for the dental industry. He brings an agile, collaborative, data-driven approach to navigate clients' most pressing challenges with a cloud-based enterprise offering that creates compelling value. He directs our teams at Method in bringing the roadmap to life in a fast-paced, growth-oriented environment. He enjoys the challenge of building an engaged community of customers who push the, day, the team daily to improve, to innovate, and to ignore the status quo. As a sought-after industry presenter and thought leader, he brings a message of how procurement strategy can powerfully impact an entire organization. With a background including procurement and supply chain practitioner, consulting and software entrepreneur, he takes a consultant solution-oriented approach to his work, partnering with his customer dentist to support lasting change that considers the realistic day-to-day -day constraints that they all face. Um, I could go on and on and on, but to my homies, this is not a commercial. No one pays to get on the show. It's the fact that the bottom line is, is this. You know, I had four boys who were dependent on me until they flew out of the nest, and now they all own their own home, and they got, they're no longer dependent on me, and they're, they got six dependents on them. And I know when my six grandchildren, when they have a baby, that I'm out of here. And so all I'm thinking about is my little grandchildren and my little Taylor Marie and Evelyn and Jasper and Gunner as a birthday on Easter. You know, when I'm gone and they go to the dentist and the dentist is owned by Wall Street and says, oh, we should crown that tooth and not do a filling. Or if they go to a dental insurance company owned dental office, like, uh, you know, uh, Kaiser Permanente owns nine offices in Portland. Uh, um, Cigna owned uh, some dental offices and got out of that business. And the insurance company, like all insurance companies, they want to collect a premium and not pay the claim. And they're all saying all that. Well, where's my little Taylor Marie go when she needs a dentist? I don't, you know, everybody that I talk about is a top line deal. There's a dentist, there's a dental insurance companies, there's finance companies, suppliers, manufacturers. Those are all top line numerator numbers divided by the bottom line numerator denominator of the patient. And we're supposed to keep one eye on the patient and one eye on costs and hold up our hand in front of our face and make everything faster, easier, higher quality, lower costs, and smaller. And uh, I just want her to be able to go to a dentist. I only want dentists making diagnosis and treatment plannings. Now, how that's paid for and what supplies you use, that that that's that's a whole other deal. But I'm just um, I know this. You're competing against DSOs, and everything Dan is talking about is what they are doing. So you wear way too many hats, and you need to delegate, and you need to find an inside business partner. Hopefully, it's your spouse or, or someone that's going to be there with you 10, 20 years. All my success can be tracked down to about a dozen people that have been with me right here for 32 years, 20 to 32 years. And um, Dan, it's just an honor to be on your show, and I want to start with... The question, do you think DSOs are thinking about dental supplies like you are? And what percent of my homie individual practicing dentist um, um, get it? Yeah, thank you, Howard, and I appreciate you having us on the show. This is a this is a great privilege to to kind of spread the 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 good news, spread the gospel a little bit about about what we're doing and why it's so important um, work for for dental, and and we are focused on that business that business part of the practice that that allows you to be sustainable in all those other areas of, of serving patients. You know, DSOs, uh, the, the promise of, of a multi-location, uh, whether you call yourself a DSO or not, the promise of getting into multiple locations in the first place is, is to, uh, to scale if it, effectively. And, and so, as you know, they're using that, um, uh, you know, that charge to go after marketing and, and human resources and all these other areas of, of the business to make, to make it more uh, scalable. And, and to make those processes more more consistent in different ways. So absolutely, DSOs are, are now starting to turn their attention to 
the expense side of the equation and focused on procurement and, and the, the whole cycle of, of outside goods and services spend. We, we call it spend management. So not every DSO is there yet, um, um, but you know the promise of leveraging your buying power, which is now larger with multiple locations, is, is, a, is an aspect of that, that now you're starting to see people build procurement functions, procurement departments at the DSO level. In the meanwhile, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the solo dentist, right, in, in, in need to compete effectively, we're excited because they're starting to see the light as well. That, that after years of, of uh, no transparency in the dental supplies market, now there's providers like ourselves coming to the table and saying, hey, you, you, have, different, you have different options. You have options that you didn't know about. And we're starting to see that, um, uh, that awakening, if you will, to help them, to help them compete. So we actually serve both ends of the, of the market, uh, but, but yeah, there's a, there's an awakening and really it's come from other industries. Uh, that's what I like to tell people, you know, we're, we're, proc- we're procurement first and, and sort of dental second, but those two together have not really been focused on uh, by providers. And so we found that opportunity early on to say, Hey, here's, here's an industry that's, um, that's not yet followed some of these, these revelations that other industries have proven. So we're, we're going down a, a somewhat well-worn path, but there's a lot of changes that we have to do to ad- adapt it to, to dental. God, there's a lot of changes. I graduated in 87 and I thought the automatic garage door opener was the big technology home run. And when they brought that to the TV, so you didn't have to get up and change channel. And I mean, I never imagined walking out of dental school that I'd have an iPhone that that's connected to dental town with a quarter million dentists on board. But um, a lot of dentists get confused. You know, I, I graduated in dental school in 87 and I'm okay. a dentist and I got an MBA degree. And so I know business, um, but I started my own dental publication in 1994. So I am a dentist and a journalist with an MBA and all these supply companies are owned by my friends. I mean, I, and I love them to death. I mean, gosh, darn uh, um, my, um, Pete Frechette, the big founder of Taking Patterson Public. I mean, he was a good friend of mine, but he, it was only him and 3M in Minneapolis, St. Paul, where my sister is in a nunnery. And so every time I visited her, I need to go do something dental for four hours and one minute to make the whole thing a business trip. And uh, so I'd go hang out with Pete Frechette at Patterson for hours and one minute. Love Rick and Chuck Cohen at Benco. They've helped me so much in my mind and uh, always put me on their list of top 30 dental influence people every year. Uh, but I'm still a journalist and they're friends and they know but what you said something interesting that um the supply company hasn't had a lot of um transparency it's been kind of opaque and there was just a huge lawsuit about that um where basically the three big boys patterson shine ben go um when they found out one of my uh ex-employee friends Ahmad shams was starting a online dental supply business that they said if they didn't kick him out they weren't going there and by god they uh they didn't they no showed and they got their ass slapped by a judge. Um, were you aware of that? And what were your thoughts on all that? Was that what you're referring to when you say there hasn't been a lot of transparency? I mean, all the Texas dentists walking around didn't know what was going on. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, I did follow that case. Uh, uh, and that was a few years actually before we started Method. Uh, you know, I think... Um, but it was in the court for years and years and years. I mean, you know, in fact, I still think there's some 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 parts of it still going on. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I mean, you know, from, from our perspective, what, what's the antidote to, uh, to, to suppliers kind of calling, maybe pulling some tricks, right? Uh, and, and, that's, and that's having in a good above board documented uh, procurement process where you compete, uh, you know, for, for where, where suppliers compete for your business. Okay. So, you know, having a, having a level playing field, um, having, for example, the opportunity to let suppliers bid on the opportunity to serve uh, your practice, um, you know, and, and putting it all on the table in a transparent way and making, making that decision, not based on maybe who gives you the best uh, uh, golf vacations or, or uh, sports tickets. Right. But, but actually running a true procurement process. And like I said, these, these are, these are processes that other industries have used for, for years. We're uh, we're a method kind of a coach in a lot of ways that we help coach people to, you know, how do you run an, an RFP or an RFQ? How do you, um, whoa, 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 how do you run a good whoa, internal slow, process slow down too. spanky a quarter of my listeners are still in dental school so when you use all these acronyms it'll fly right over their head so go through those two acronyms you just said uh, sure sure an RF- rfq and rfp yeah the uh, an rfp is a request for proposal and an rfq is a request for quote 
basically when you're uh, thinking of make about making a purchase, it's the, it's the process by which you spell out exactly what you need and in what volume um, over what time period. And then the suppliers uh, submit a bid to, uh, to say, you know, I can, I can serve that need and, and at this price. Um, so, so when, it so is when a way. The, so when these dental students um, want to get married, they're going to need a request for a proposal and they can find that on your website. Well, I don't think we I don't think we held much in the in the wedding industry on that front. But but yes, uh, as someone who's gone through the wedding process myself, uh, my wife and I got three quotes on a bunch of different things. It's it's the process same same as when you own a home, right? If you're not going to get a couple of quotes to uh, to do some major work on your home, you're probably going to get uh, probably going to get uh, surprised with a bit higher price than you should have paid. Uh, so that's that's certainly part of uh, part of the procurement business process. But there's there's uh, there's even more, and that's and that's sort of a a controls environment. Uh, you know, we, you have you have staff that you that you trust, um, but you also have a budget that you need to adhere to. So part of the thing that our that our tool brings to the table is you have a budget, and we help enforce that budget for expenditures each month. And all expenditures can be reviewed and approved before before they are made. So you don't have that um, we, uh, that uncomfortable, you know, oh, oh crap moment at the end of the month where you've spent past the end of your budget and 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 you have all these purchases coming in and these invoices are stacking up. And, and so, this and this is the biggest. This is a great time to talk about because this is the biggest nightmare month for dentists because now this is when they get a letter from their accountant and say, oh, by the way, you owe the government a gazillion dollars for taxes. And uh, they um, are independent contractors. So the yeah. dentist, they get jobs and they hire them illegally as an independent contractor so they can avoid paying um, financial um, FICA matching, which is what, 7.5%. So to save 7.5% of labor, they tell some one of my young homies, uh, 25, straight out of dental kindergarten, Garden, uh, that he's an independent contractor, which never holds up in court. That was designed for construction. You're building a house. You hire a plumber. You don't know crap about plumbing. And then you hire an electrician. You don't know crap about that. But when you're hiring a dentist to a dental office and you own it and you set the hours and you use your tools and equipment and charts and software and all that stuff like that, he's an employee. And every time this goes to court in my 32 years, the dentist loses and has to pay the back taxes of the dentist because the IRS just wants his money and the and the young kid didn't pay it and they just want you know their money and it, it's a nightmare and then the dentists that are working for themselves um, they don't pay their taxes every month or set it aside they think they're rich they're they look at that bank account and say I'm gonna buy me a new race car like uh, to drive around on weekends like you do and then the IRS shows up and says dude you owe forty eight thousand dollars in taxes they're like Dude, I don't have 4800 in Texas. So um, they're not sophisticated because if they owned a Dairy Queen, which is owned by Warren Buffett, the, the financial accounting, the managerial accounting, it's all on their software. But dentistry, um, you know, um, Dentrix, uh, we have Shine owns Dentrix. That's not connected to um, accounting. That's not connected to QuickBooks Pro, which they all use. I use PC accounting because I'm an MBA and I want it a little more sophisticated than that. Than Quicken, but I think Quicken might get a little better someday. Um, and um, so they, they don't know their numbers. And and I'm afraid that um, when they're talking to you about supplies in their walnut brain, they're saying, supplies, supplies is only 6% of my business. My labor is 25% and my lab bill is 10%. Why do I care about supplies or the light bill? What would you say to that? Well, it, it actually, if you care about your profit, if you care about your bottom line, it's some of the fastest way to drive new value to that bottom line, to, to pad your profits. Um, and, and, and the reason why is that a dollar taken out of the expense side of the business is direct profit, right? And if you compare that to increasing production, you know, you increase production, say a hundred dollars, the average practice is only going to be able to return about 30 to $35 to the bottom line by increasing that production. Well, we all know what in increasing production means. It's time in this, in the chair, right? And it's, it's all that comes with that. Your week, your week might already be maxed out and you have no more time to give to the chair. So if you are at that point, uh, you, you turn your attention to the expense side of the equation. And we know that, um, uh, by doing the, the data analytics, and that's a big part of, uh, you know, you, you talked about it in, in the intro you gave me, the very kind intro that you gave me today. 
being data driven in, in business is, is really um, not just a, a passing fad. It's, it's how business gets done. And I have an MBA as, as well. And, and uh, you know, I was trained in that discipline and I apply it now to, to my dental clients where you can look at the data and you can say, Hey, for the very same products, you are overpaying by X. So by cha- a change in procurement behavior, you can still keep using those same preferred you know, products, those same bonding agents, the same instruments, the same crowns and implants, but buying them smarter and differently gets, gets that product into your, uh, into your practice at a lower cost. Uh, then you have all the labor, you know, we, we talk about uh, standardizing processes in dental. Uh, that's, that's a lot of it too. You want your staff to be able to step in and follow the same discipline procurement process, no matter what they're buying or from whom. And, and that, and that helps, uh, you know, that, that helps make sure you're getting the maximum you can out of every dollar. And, and that dollar is going to be returned. Any dollar that you can save on the procurement side of the equation, producing outside goods and services, that goes right to the bottom line. There's a lot of padding in, uh, in dental lab bills, uh, as there are in uh, dental supplies bills. There's also a tremendous amount of padding in your marketing, uh, HR, advertising, and those types of bills as well. So we like to take kind of a total spend perspective at Method is that we want to help people with, with all outside goods and services. Now that tends to be first and foremost dental supplies because that's what everybody knows. But if you look at your, the expense side of your, of your, your profit and loss statement, you're going to see all kinds of spend. You've got maintenance, you've got uh, rent, you've got utilities, uh, you know, landscaping, um, office supplies, all these things. Um, we believe that a, a good procurement process can, can shave uh, cost out of all of that. You know, my dad told me, you know, my dad is, um, you know, you don't just learn from your parents' successes, you learn from their mistakes. And I just, my dad was my hero, and I saw him go from delivering Wonder Bread for $11,000 a year at all these grocery stores and, you know, leaving the house at 4 a.m. and getting home after dark. And, um, of course, when he got um, home from dark, me and my sisters would go raid the Wonder Bread truck because they collected all the stale uh, hostess Twinkies and all the all go, the yeah. stale stuff, and I, we thought we were the richest people in the world, and we didn't know we were the poorest people in town. And um, then he made a gamble, and he went into business for himself, and he bought a Sonic Drive-In franchise, and and the first year made sixty thousand. He eventually owned nine, and I, I got to see what what this does to your Im- impact on your life. Uh, but he used to always sing to me, Howie, the easiest dollar earned is a dollar in expenses saved. The second easiest dollar earned is a dollar in taxes saved. But the hardest blankety blank, 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 blank dentist you'll ever earn is from another dollar from working. And, um, and you know, so gosh darn, if you want to make it, if you need another dollar, um, why would you do another MOD composite on number two with someone with a thick tongue gagger? Um, wouldn't you just want to save a dollar in expenses on your electric bill, your taxes, your labor? I mean, it, it's all about, and, and unfortunately, my homies, I, I love them to death because all they want to do is, they're a chef. They just want to go in the kitchen and work up a big souffle. They want to, you want to come in with a toothache. They just want to get you out of pain. That That's why we went to eight years of school. Um, but um, my gosh, they, they don't want to do, they, they, they never know their numbers. And then they don't have anybody helping them. Uh, you know, I think yeah. Open Dental is going to be our savior just because it's open and I hopefully somebody will um, program a bridge between QuickBooks Pro and Quicken and all of that stuff and help them. But okay, so homies, go to Method USA, MethodUSA.com. And Dan, what are my homies going to find when they go to MethodUSA.com? I see the top tabs of products, solutions, why method, pricing, resources. What, what What's on your website? Walk them through it. Remember, uh, they're driving a car right now. Yeah, so uh, so on that first page, you're going to see an explainer uh, video that talks about, uh, I think it's about 90 seconds, uh, just a, a nutshell of, of what we do. We're a technology provider that helps helps guide your procurement process from start to finish. Helps hey, make sure you do the second. right steps. Um, Kyle, can he actually pull up the website on his end right now and give us a demo? Yeah, yeah, we can do a little uh, little demo yeah, for perfect, the audience. Here. Perfect, Absolutely. Thank you. Nice. 
So if you're on iTunes, switch over to YouTube. Um, we're at uh, youtube.com uh, uh, forward slash uh, Dentaltown Magazine. And thank you so much for the 15,700 subscribers. Gosh darn, that's amazing. And if you're a fan of the show, please subscribe. Hit the click button. Uh, but um, um, So if you're on iTunes, switch over to YouTube and see this demo. So give us a demo. I'll shut up and give us a demo and explain to me why my dentist, who's trying to learn how to do a root canal and place an implant, needs to get focused on your website. Sure, sure. So, uh, so it's a it's a data driven tool that, that that we have. So your your team your team is going to log into our tool to do the the purchase activity, and that can start with simply a, a list of inventory. We track inventory, and we use uh, we use barcoding. I don't know if you can see that uh, clearly, but this is a wireless barcode scanner. So many products uh, now, thanks to the FDA, are coming with barcodes, and we can help you barcode those products, track them uh, both in and out so that you have some precision to identifying what it is that you need to buy in the first place. Uh, and, and so that kind of starts the, the, the process, or it can start the process. We know that in dental, it's a lot about reordering. So you're going to have some private catalogs, uh, which are like favorites lists, and you can set these up and, and, and share them. You know, here's some examples. You might have PPE, hygiene, restoratives, et cetera. And you can promote those across your entire practice. And that's including the concept of a formulary. So if that is a new term to you, I would encourage you to, to, to talk, with your, uh, talk with your supplier about it, uh, do some research about that concept. But a formulary gives you uh, typically a, a deeper discount on a set of products that you, you want to standardize around. And so you can publish those in our tool. You can see here this little icon. You can publish those to your entire team so that they're not going off into the four corners of, of the earth buying their own uh, uh, varnish or, or uh, adhesives. They're going to be doing it against a list that you've already vetted for clinical effectiveness as, as well as um, for savings. And most suppliers will give you a, a deeper discount on your formulary list. That's, that's part of what we always coach people to, uh, to negotiate for. So our tool also supports private label products, um, and, and we have a cross-reference between private label products from different suppliers. So this first one here, just to, to pick one here, this uh, bite registration material, we've actually cross-referenced in our uh, catalog, our, our global database, and our global database of products has over 430,000 uh, products in it. But we've been able to cross-reference common private label products, so you can compare a Darby option versus a Pearson option versus a, a Shine option and make a, an effective decision um, with, with pricing and stock availability in mind. You can see here some of the stock availability that's listed. That actually is coming in real time from the suppliers. We've got some, some secret sauce that we use to do that, um, but the idea is that you're going to be able to uh, do a complete comparison in the market um, as complete as we can facilitate. Uh, so reordering products is, is key. Um, having good information about the products that you're going to buy is key. Um, but also what I'm doing here is this is a marketplace. This is a one-stop uh, shopping cart. And notice I haven't picked a supplier yet. I'm focused on what I need. These are the items in my inventory that I'm running low on. These are the items that I've ordered in the past. Um, these are other specialized items that I need that I can do brand new searches for. And then what our system allows you to do is control the actual purchase by first uh, collecting that information and then deciding from where you're going to buy it. And for that, we have what we call a cost analysis tool. You can see this is a request, and I can go one by one, and I can say, all right, let's see here. Um, looks like Darby's going to win that one. Maybe this next one uh, you know, might be... Um, better because of stock status to get from, uh, from a Benko or a, a Shine, for instance. So you could go through that and make that decision one by one, or we do make it a lot easier by doing what's called a cost analysis. We could put that into a grid and we could do some comparisons and flag for you who the best source of supply might be for a given product. And what we're doing is we're highlighting, uh, as we retrieve the price, we're highlighting in green uh, the best the best option that you have. So you can see DC here. Um, you know we can see Darby there, etc. And this will give you a comparison. And you know sometimes when I grab random items in, in demos like this, it's um, maybe not as extreme. But um, here you can see a 5.6 percent savings. 
uh, from using two suppliers, these two suppliers to these two suppliers. So our system is able to make some recommendations about the mix of who you should buy these products from based on our knowledge of the current price that you're eligible for with each of those suppliers. Um, and if there's not a product available from a given supplier, you can make that selection. But this all starts with good knowledge about the products themselves and your suppliers and the pricing. And if you don't have that, it's sort of like, uh, to use the, the racing analogy, it's if you pour bad gas into your car, you're not going to, you're not going to win the race. Uh, so you have to have really good product information. And that's, that's one of the, the strengths I think of the, of the method tool that we try to, uh, try to put in there. You also see on this screen here, this budget exceeded. So part of our system is to control the purchases before they're made. Sometimes they're made in accident um, or sometimes they're made in excess. If you have a strict budget that you follow, and by the way, that's another best practice, then you can put it in our system. We'll monitor that. And you can see we flagged this one red because you're already over budget. So you better really need those items, right? And, and that's going to that's gonna show your staff before they make a purchase where is where you're at with regards to that budget situation. And then before we actually make purchases themselves, we're going to actually be able to route this for a, 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 an approval. And so typically the doctor is going to be able to, uh, to get, they'll get an email from the method system. They'll be able to review that, that purchase proposal, which is basically what this is. It's just a proposal. These are the suppliers that are involved with my proposal. We can uh, uh, get the, the shipping handling and tax at this stage. And you can see I'm about to actually order from two suppliers. So in one step, I can do two suppliers. I just finish this off and submit it for approval. And this approval process is part of the, the controls that we've, we've been talking about is it goes to the doctor, they have an opportunity to review and approve. Maybe they're gonna deny it. Uh, I mean, if they deny it, there's communication recorded in the system back, uh, back to the submitter. Then we're able to place the purchase orders. A purchase order is just a legal document between you and the supplier saying what you need and how much you're going to pay. And your supplier will ship and, and fulfill that order just like normal. They'll send you an invoice. And then back in our system, you can mark off the products that you've received. And, and that keeps, uh, keeps kind of full circle tightness in that process. So you know exactly what you're waiting on. You know exactly uh, what you've received. And it gives you a chance to check this status, check the condition of those products before you pay for them, rather than blindly paying an invoice, not really sure if you've actually gotten those products. So that's kind of the nutshell of the, of the process. Does that make sense, Howard, what I just showed there? It makes a lot of sense. Um, I want to do, uh, I want you to um, show me some, inch, some exact questions. Um, PPE costs have gone up. Um, yeah. One of the threads is, what are you paying per hundred gloves? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we, you know, we, we've seen we've seen multiple dimensions to the PPE problem, uh, uh, right? And the, the, the challenge one is just uh, availability, um, and and so you know, having having order history. I think I have a few that I could show here. Having order history on those commonly ordered items, where you can see the price that you paid over time. That's going to be down here at the bottom of the screen. You can see the different uh, purchase activity that you that you made against that item. We're in the process of building out some really exciting functionality around analytics. So you will actually be able to pull up a whole category of products and see your cost escalate over time. And in the case of a PPE, uh, it's starting to come back down, but it's, it's gonna be high for a while, unfortunately. Um, but it all starts with collecting the data. And no matter what the supplier you're buying from, our platform will capture that data. So that, that's a really important point. If, if, you, if today you're buying from this supplier's website, that supplier's website, et cetera, they have a lot more data about your buying habits than you do. We, 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 we tell that to people, our clients all the time. And so what do you think that means when you come into a negotiation? If they know more about your buying habits than you do, they've got the upper hand. This helps level the playing field. Now you've got data that you can go back to a supplier and say, wait a minute, I know, I know exactly how many PPE uh, units I buy. I know how many cabo wipes I buy per quarter per year. Give me your best quote on that volume. And, and really you wanna be talking to your suppliers about your annual volume. Uh, we believe that's the best value conversation you can have with a, with a, with a supplier. 
because you're going to commit potentially a whole block of business to them. And in, in return, you know, they're going to be able to give you a better discount than if they were negotiating with you one order at a time. So we try to help people see that, um, you can still partner with, you know, suppliers who are, you know, who are good for your business, but you're going to negotiate with them. You're going to talk to them about the importance of, of, uh, maintaining level pricing and cutting out some of the games that you see in the, in the, in the dental supplies business. It's, it's amazing also what suppliers will do once they know they're, they're being watched uh, with a system like this, because you've got that data now and you can go back to them and say, Hey, I've seen your price moving up, justify it. You know, your, yeah. your and, price and, for this product's three times the, you know, the consumer pricing index. Why is that? And, you know, and sometimes when you get lost in the woods, you just need a compass. I mean, if you just know where North, South, East, West are, you know, if you can just, you know, have a compass. And if you summarize 5,000 years of recording history, the two biggest problems were there wasn't transparency. So you didn't know what kings and queens and other people were doing. You're buying from someone. They're not being transparent about all these details. And then competition. I mean, dentists hate competition. Um, they set up state boards of dental examiners in every state so that um, great dentists from Mexico can't come up here and practice dentistry in Guadalupe or uh, there's probably about 100,000 dentists that come here tomorrow from India. Uh, so nobody likes anything competition. So absolute power corrupts, absolutely. So it's all about tr price transparency and competition. And if you're transparent and competitive, then it's good for everyone, not just the seller, the buyer, the whole damn uh, herd of 8 billion humans uh, will be better served with transparency and competition competition. But I think my dentists are still stuck in that Groupon mode. Um, they're always looking for a deal. You know what I mean? Right. And, right. Um, you know, we, we I tried Groupon, but, um, you know, if a Mexican restaurant says, hey, you can get two tacos and enchilada for a dollar, uh, they'll come. But if they get one that says 99 cents, they'll, they'll, they'll leave. I mean, it was a race to the bottom. Um, the suppliers are always offering deals. Um, when the legend, um, my gosh, the legend was Sam Walton of Walmart in little old Bentonville, and he said, we're, we're not having deals. You know how much money it takes to have a Labor Day sale and a Fourth of July sale and a going out of business sales? That expense could all be saved and have lower costs. And he says, I know no one else is doing it, but we're going to have everyday low price, and, and we're going to ingrain in mom's head that you're not going to find it cheaper than Walmart, and we're not going to advertise, we're not going to do deals, but my homies are still stuck in deal mode. They're always looking for a deal. What would, what would you say to them that Sam Walton didn't already show. In fact, he was so for American competition that when Bernie Marcus from Atlanta, who now owns the Falcons, uh, called him up and asked for advice on his 4th of July, um, their number one selling product was a ceiling fan. He's like, um, what do you recommend on how I should do this deal? And, and Sam says, you know, get in a plane, come down here. You, you, you're, you're out of your mind. And he did a 180 on Bernie Marcus. And that was the birth of Home Depot going wall to wall in America um, to get off deal mode and go on everyday low price shopping. And, and then it's doing in marketing. They're, they still do all their marketing to get a new patient. You think Walmart's looking for a new patient, new customer that's never been to Walmart or Southwest Airlines or or that when you're advertising for a new patient, you're an am an amateur. All the big boys and girls are are um, putting all their money in loyalty programs, longevity programs. You fly Southwest Airlines ten times, you get a free ticket. They all want customers for life. They they want to build a Hoover Dam and back up a patient hygiene capacity a mile long. My homies don't even have a dam. For every new patient they put in the uh, in the hygiene department, one has to come off because that hygienist, if she works 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year, that's only 2,000 hours a year. She can only see 1,000 people twice a year for a cleaning. So if she gets 30 new patients a month, my God, 30 old patients have to come off the month. Are you... Quit booking her and start a new hygienist. I mean, at 30 patients a month, every four years, you'd have another full-time hygienist, and they have one hygienist 40 years later. So how do you get them to go from marketing for a new patient to a loyalty program, and how do you get them in supplies to go from looking for a deal? I mean, come on, Easter is Sunday. Are you telling me you don't have an Easter special deal on gloves? Come on, Dan. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, we've had the pleasure of assembling a, a team at Method, uh, and, and we have a 
bunch of different industry backgrounds and we all, we all scratch our heads about this, this deal mentality, this promotion mentality, because when it, when it comes to corporate buying, and this is what the DSOs are, are doing folks. Uh, you know, I think that's a, a good, a good comparison. Corporate buying does not entail temporary discounts, temporary deals. Um, and corporate buying is, is much more planned and it's much more negotiated on the behalf of your volume over a period of time. And you're going to find, uh, you know, with, with that sort of everyday low price, locked in pricing, being able to hold that price or hold the supplier's markup fixed for a, a period of time, you're going to, you're going to come out much better ahead. Um, both of you really, uh, rather than this fire sale, uh, mentality suppliers understand that you're only paying attention to a small number of products as well. And those are typically the products that you buy the most. So suppliers will often extend great discounts and in deals on those products that you pay attention to the most, but then those less frequent products, they'll hit you with a 50% markup. So that, that one or two product, uh, 50% markup can more than make up for the, the, the lost uh, margin that they would have on the other items. So, so that's, that's some of what's going on with, uh, with the, uh, the industry mentality, but the DSOs are, are, uh, are seeing through it. They're bringing much more of a corporate mentality to, to that where they're negotiating on behalf of many locations for a period of time. And they're actually saying, I don't want to have discounts that are temporary. If you're able to give me a temporary discount, you know what? You're able to give me a discount the whole year long. So let's, let's talk about a whole year long discount. And our tool for, for one, not only just collecting the data, but our data will actually let you enforce a price. Uh, so no matter what the supplier's website price does, our, our site locks in that price and makes sure you pay only that price. And then you negotiate, you know, every, every year, or every two years uh, to get that price updated. So not every supply, you might be thinking, well, how, how you know, did the suppliers cooperate with their arrangement? And I, you know, Howard, I'll say some, some, some outright have been confused enough that they, they, they can't see a way to cooperate, but more and more people are like, okay, I'll play, you know, I'll, you give me, you give me a fair game with published rules and I'll go after your business. I will do what it takes to, to win your business. I don't want to be under, you know, undercut or a few dollars here and there, or a free box of gloves or, or other discounts. I want to have a relationship. Okay. So then, so, so then here's, so you're, you're doing great, but I am, and I'm not throwing you under your bus. I just know what my homies think. Okay. And here's what they're thinking. They're thinking, dude, look, uh, love you. Um, you know, all that stuff. But look, my, uh, my payroll is 25% and my supplies is six. Why should I pay? somebody $25 an hour to flip through a shine catalog or go online to save 12 cents on gauze. Um, you know, I don't want my most expensive labor on your website doing all that. I'd rather have that free person come in and do it all for me. So is this, you know, I mean that, that, that's legit. Why am I paying someone $25 an hour to save six cents on gauze? Um, you know, when the rep does all that stuff. So, how hard is this? How complicated? How much labor is it going to take? That's my that's my biggest bill, Dan. Yeah, and and, and that and that's a valid uh, valid concern because some of the techniques that we've talked about and shown today, you could go do manually uh, with one of your team members' uh, surplus time. But you're right; it's probably not going to pay off well. Uh, that's why you got to have some automation. That's why that's why technology is well suited for for solving these types of problems. Let let the system do the the hard work of going and comparing pricing, or uh, enforcing uh, uh, you know a budget control or things that that you would normally have to do through some extra hoop jumping manually. If you were trying to do this with spreadsheets or, or paper, um, you know very few people have kind of the stamina to keep to keep up with that. So that's why that's why a technology tool is is a great solution for this, and that's and that's why. Many, many other industries have adopted this type of approach in, in, in their procurement day to day. Um, the, the range of savings that we're talking about, and we've, we've done this analysis so many times now for a typical one dentist practice with, um, you know, production in the million dollar, $1.1 million range, we're looking at 13 to $35,000 of savings to the bottom line every year by adopting solid procurement practices using, using a, te- a technology platform. So, you know, that, that can, uh, that can very easily make up for some of the, um, uh, some of the labor, uh, uh, shortage that you may have in your practice and free up people's time to work on other things. 
and still have, still have, you know, new money coming to the bottom line that you don't have to go produce by seeing more patients. So I, I love um, your quote um, and your article I post on Dental Town saying, God, we trust all others must bring data by W. Edwards Deming. And uh, I don't know if you know the Deming story, but he was the smartest business scientist of our time. And after um, Japan was literally destroyed, remember, the United States is the only country that ever existed that dropped two, not one, but two nuclear bombs on a civilization filled with men, women, and children, and it was just, I, I think that was humanity's rock bottom, and they felt bad, and they, they sent W. Edwards Deming to go over there and clean it up, and he totally, um, I mean, they, I mean, to tell you how bad it was, my two older sisters left high school, went straight to the nunnery, and they had like 3 million Japanese people change religion. Do you know how depressed you are when you give up on your God? I mean, it was rock bottom. And Deming went over there and said, look, look, we're going to do data driven. The, the, he knew Americans didn't. Americans say, I got a gut feeling this will sell. He said, guts are filled with fecal matter. We're going to be data driven. In God we trust, all others must bring data. I'm very excited that, um, you know, my accounting company is... Uh, um, Sage that used to be Peachtree that's bought by Sage and now they they finally after just nagging on them forever they finally see this enormous gap in dentistry I mean if you go to a, 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 a Dairy Queen owned by Warren Buffett every one of those managers at the end of the day knows what his food cost was 31% his crew labor is 14% yada his marketing 5% yada 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 and he knows what his bottom line is per day my homies couldn't do that if you put a gun to their head but the DSOs can do it and they're not doing it with off the soft off the shelf software um, Steve Thorne he bought a copy of a dental practice management system under the understanding that he was just going to take it as a base and then take it from there I mean Steve Thorne of Pacific I mean Talk about genius extraordinaire. He knows down to the penny of what his costs are. When I go to any dental office, I say, okay, your hygienist did a cleaning exam and bite wing. She's worked here a decade. She does this eight times a day for 10 years. Did you just make $12.18 after taxes or do you lose five bucks? He doesn't even have a, a, a clue. And and then he'll say, well, you think I should get another hygienist? And then I'll, it'll take me a day to sit down and pull all this information and Excel spreadsheets to figure out exactly how many full-time hygienists he'd have to have to go bankrupt because he's never made a dollar off of a cleaning. And he doesn't even know that it's the expense of root canals and crowns and implants and ortho cases that are subsidizing all these cleanings, fillings, exams, and x-rays done in a loss. To even back that up, I'll just say to him, by the way, how much does how much does a filling cost here for an MOD composite on number three? And he tells me a price. This is what's frightening. He'll tell me like two fifty. He doesn't even get two fifty from anyone, and he signed up with twelve different PPOs and thinks he's only signed up with three because the PPO contract says they can sell this distribution list to other providers. So, so he's doing a filling for twelve different prices. He doesn't even know what his break-even point is to have this room for an hour. And I mean, and and then he, and then he's mad at the DSOs because they're growing at twice the rate, and it and in a zero sum game, if they're growing, if they've gone from zero to eighteen percent in my lifetime, where do you think that eighteen percent came from? I live in Arizona, ground zero for DSOs because our governor did the right thing, and that is that the hospitals couldn't find nurses, and it was easier to recruit nurses from Ireland than it was from California because of the state boards and everything. And they said, are you out of your mind? So he passed a law that said, look, if you're licensed, I don't care if it's an engineer or whatever, dentist, hygienist, whatever, you're licensed in any state, you're good in Arizona. So we have the highest number of dentists working for a DSO, which is 18 out of every 100 dentists. And there's five states that don't even have 1%. You know, it's a very long tail. But Arizona is ground number one. And I am amazed at their calling centers. I mean, I've gone into the Aspen call center. My homies, they don't record their phone calls. They don't do any in-office training. They don't know how many people have to call before you can convert one to come in a chair. Uh, gosh darn, uh, I guarantee you, um, um, 
my gosh, Aspen Dental, uh, they know that they can convert like 68%. And if you're working for them and you're only converting about 40, they just keep training until you get to 60 or 70 or they let you go. And my homies want their sports team to get rid of that wide receiver and put someone in there that doesn't have butter all over their hands. Uh, But he doesn't even measure his own most important employee in the whole company is incoming sales calls and outgoing sales calls. And in a small business, that guy is the highest paid person. The sales guy is the only person who makes as much as the owner. I mean, it's the guy who comes in with a suit and tie. He's making the big bucks and he's taking those calls and he's he, he's selling. Uh, whereas dentistry, it's like, thank you for calling today's dental. Can you please hold? And then you don't even know how many people went to hold. These DSOs will buy a practice because they'll they'll monitor and they'll say, oh my God, 11 calls a day go to voicemail that are never even checked. And he's selling this office for a dollar. We already see it's worth a dollar 25. And then they buy it for a dollar 20. They buy it for a dollar. They already know it's worth a dollar 25. And then they can go in there and offer solutions like your everything's, you know, if dentists want to hang on, and I, I think this is the best thing they're going to get. We have to look at the legal profession. The lawyers, there's a million attorneys, and um, a half of them work for a big corporate group and a half for individuals. And I think this is where this market's going to go. So half the dentists are going to be absorbed and mopped up into the DSO, and that and that's good for my grandchildren because it brings more competition. Before DSOs came to Arizona, if you broke your tooth on a Sunday, you'd find three mermaids before you found a dentist open to fix it. And and we got proof on the back end, the emergency room, 8.5% of all new of their uh, clientele is odontogenic in origin because all my homies are closed. So immediately, Ducey passed that, DSO started flying down here, and now my grandchildren, two of my six live here, Jasper's out in um, Goodyear, and uh, and um, um, Evelyn's out in Apache Junction, and if, if I pass on and they get bigger and break their front tooth off on a Sunday on Easter. They got a dentist to go to. And the emergency rooms are insane because if I went there with a heart attack, they could do a bypass on me, but they can't pull a tooth. What? How how do you have an institution that can do a bypass and a brain surgery and amputate a foot and they, they can't fix a tooth? I mean, if that's just not... That doesn't even make sense. Uh, if I was going to start a DSO, it'd be in emergency rooms all over America because I know everyone's close. So the bottom line is, dude, you, you got to get sophisticated. Um, um, so my homie right now wants to know, where where can they go to get a demo on this? I mean, um, to see how hard, how time-consuming. And by the way, docs, I know you don't want to hear this, but you're going to hear it because I'm not here to make a friend. I'm here to help you. Uh, and I'm not even help trying to help you for your sake. I'm trying to help you for my grandchildren's sake, okay? This is all about me. Um, My gosh, um, you can't delegate something if you don't understand it. You have to own it first, and when you completely own it, then you can delegate to someone. But you, you look at the greatest institutions ever built. Somebody started their own company, for, or they they uh, look, look at Sandy Weil, um, who went and got a job at um, at, at the bank in, in the mailroom. Thirty years later, he was the CEO, and as he walked all the way through all those agencies, he automated. M- modernize and that was the the story of sandy weil and citigroup and all that kind of stuff and his and my banker is um chase and jamie diamond was his protege so doc you got to understand this first and when you understand it then you can delegate it but you, don't don't tell me you can't even uh, send out an insurance claim someone comes in for a clean exam and x-ray and you can't even bill insurance and and then you're off to your 1400th tmj course and only one percent of your revenue is tmj dude get focused get focused you got competition across the street so how dan tell my homie how he's going to go to method usa and learn how this system works from a to z yeah the best resource on our website uh, first of all would be about uh, halfway down that main page it says what can method procurement do for you it's a quick video it's two minutes and you can learn a, a little bit about uh, you know our our tool and our process, our approach. That's that's why we call the company method. Um, okay. It, it, okay, it is a can, tool, but it's also an approach. Okay, can you email me that video file? Email Kyle, and then we'll insert mm-hmm. it right now. Do you know where your dollars are being spent in your dental practice? 
A busy dental practice has so many moving parts that having complete oversight to your expenses and spending can become impossible. What if there was a place where you could easily compare supply costs from multiple vendors to make sure you're getting the best prices? A place where you could place orders from multiple vendors, approve supply requests, track against your budget, and manage your inventory all in one platform so nothing slips through the cracks. Imagine how much money you could save. Well, now that place exists. Method Procurement. The Method platform is designed to streamline all phases of your purchasing process. Our cloud-based solution keeps you connected to your team, suppliers, financial systems, and the dental community with a single click. Condensing all these channels into one intuitive platform allows you to focus your attention on what's most important, building your practice and increasing profit. We have the expertise and technology it takes to help you manage a formulary, budget, and inventory from a single dashboard. From a comprehensive dental supply catalog to a customized cost comparison tool, buying supplies for your dental practice has never been simpler. Team members can manage all items from every supplier in a single workflow. Method also alerts your team when stock is low and it's time to reorder, ensuring that you'll always have your most critical supplies on hand. Method procurement will transform your spend and inventory management to improve your bottom line and save your practice money. Interested? Schedule a demo or a free cost savings analysis at www.methodusa.com to see how we can help your practice. Our method, your success. So now, two minutes later, uh, he's done. He's having a cigarette. Uh, and then what? Yep. So you got two options. Either either you can request a demo from, from us and we'll make it personalized to you. So you can ask those questions that, that are, that are, that are, uh, are bugging you about how, how, how are we going to do this? Do you support that? I mean, that's, that's really where the rubber hits the road is, is in a personalized demo. And we do those, uh, all, all week, every, every day of the week. And then the other thing would, would be, we have a return on investment calculator. So it's methodusa.com. We'll give you this link, Howard. It's slash ROI. And you're going to put your production in there. And we will compute for you the range of savings that we believe is possible. Now, obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a benchmark. It's a, it's a heuristic. But uh, we can get to know you better and, and refine that. But we talk about your overhead. We talk about your profitability. We talk about how we drive the savings to the bottom line. You at least owe it to yourself to understand what, what the dollars would look like for your particular situation. And that's at that return on investment or slash ROI page. Okay. Well, I just went there and I'm going to, um, I'm going to up the ante on you, man. I'm going to put some pressure on you. I'm going to email this to you and my office manager, Dawn. And again, she's been with me. She's been, you know, when I hired Dawn, the Dead Sea was just sick. Uh, I just had a slight fever. And um, I want to see uh, what she thinks about this, because this is where I can add a lot of value uh, to uh, these uh, podcasts, because um, I, um, you know, I, I, I called you, you didn't call me. And um, I think, um, um, you know, we, we give them good advice. So I just emailed you that. So you got Don's contact, because I want to figure this Thank out. You. And yeah. like I say, I want to figure this out, even though... Uh, some, some dentists will call me on my seven. They'll say, well, you heard you're not open seven to seven. Yeah, I'm a millionaire. I'm 59 years old this year. I was born in 62. Yeah, I'm, I admit it. I'm old. I'm fat. I'm lazy. But, man, when I opened up my office in 87, I was seven to seven, seven days a week until Pastor Don Snyder across the street. He just passed away uh, last year, uh, right before the pandemic, came over and said that he is hearing um, – parishioners at his Lutheran church, uh, not happy, uh, with the fact that I'm open on Sunday. Now I kind of think some of it had to do with the parking too, because that was his big day and he loved all the parking, but, but he, he sat down and he explained to me, he said it like this, he said, I know, I know you're raised Catholic and I'm Lutheran and all this, but every religion, uh, figured out, first of all, this is really cool. They all figured out seven days. You know why Every culture, I mean, even the Navajo Indian Reservation on this side of the other side of the earth had a seven-day week. The Chinese, the Indians, the Babylon, you know why they all had seven-day work week, a seven-day week? Because 
they saw the the zodiac was the background fixed star deals, right? The Big Dipper, all these things. The Big Dipper even has seven points. Uh, but they 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 all saw the background. But there were seven celestial objects going around that they thought were watching them and were gods, sun gods, moon gods, um, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter. And there were just seven things flying around and they all came to the conclusion that those, those are what's watching us. Every civilization decided on seven days because of the seven celestial objects. And they um, they also agreed on a Sabbath. The, the Muslims, Islam took off Friday. Judaism took off Saturday. Christians took off Sunday. They said, dude, for your own sake, your own health, your own patience, your own employment, you need a damn day off. And I was like 24 piss and vinegar bouncing off the walls with energy. I mean, I just lived for another toothache. And uh, so... We closed down Sunday. Pastor Don, he convinced me that. When he convinced me that 5,000 years of humans decided you need to take a day off every week, end of story, I said, you're right. I'm, I, how do you disagree with 5,000 years of all the humans? Uh, you know, so um, so I, I did that. But um, anyway, I, I can't believe that was the fastest hour we've ever gone. Uh, but is Dan the man? Um, and, and your last name's Traub. Uh, you're a Hoosier, but... Um, uh, Traub, that that's German, isn't it? It is. It is um, mostly German, and um, my ancestors were traders of of wine. So uh, Traub is grape in Germany. Uh, Seriously, so that's the tie. That is so cool. I love name origination because I've lectured in fifty countries, and it's just neat. But it seems like, um, like you said, most names go back to like blacksmith. You know, go back to what you did, and so you come yeah. from a long line of winos and grape growers and winemakers <laughs> Ferran means baker in lebanon and uh, okay. so they okay. think some lebanese guy got lost ended up in ireland for a few generations of redheads and here i am um and, and bread is my favorite deal i mean bread and butter is my favorite part of any meal uh but the first slice is just like the first glass of wine it's just a warm-up uh, my gosh um and um and it, it all comes down to W. Edwards Deming. And, and I'll tell you what about Deming. Why you're sitting over here in America having the Oscars and the Grammys. And the, what other words? There's Oscars for movies. There's Grammys. What's the one for uh, Emmys? Tonys. And, and, and you make a, a, a Pinto. Okay. You go over to Japan and they have the W. Edwards Deming Award and more Japanese watch that while you're all obsessing on Britney Spears and, and Queen Fetisha and all, all these things like that. They're like this, this girl won it because she figured out how to do something faster, easier, higher qualities, lower price. And all the other engineers were in awe of her intellectual geniusness. And that's why all my cars are, are Japanese or Germans. Those are the only two countries that know how to make a damn car. Uh, if you buy an American car, um, when I bought my, I bought in two Chevy Suburbans. Looking back, I think they should have came with a mechanic who just lives in the back seat. And, uh, and so he's always there. And homies, if you want to, you 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 got you got, you're at a fork in the road. You're either going to say, "Look, I'm a chef. I just want to work. I just want to be the head chef at the Hyatt Regency, and I'll work for the Hyatt Regency, and that's fine." Because there's two types of people. You like to give orders or you like to take orders. And a lot of dentists I know don't like to take orders. And we look at lawyers, it's it's half and half. And and two out of three dentists at these DSOs, not just here, but in the only two countries where they're publicly traded, there's two in Australia, one 300 dentist and one and, um, um, Pacific Smiles. There's one in Singapore, who's probably the only other billionaire other than uh, Rick Workman here in America. Uh, Q&M is just racing across China. And they got four patients to work with for every one Rick's got. Um, they all know their numbers. They know their numbers, and two out of three of their dentists are all women because women marry upwards economically. You're not a woman dentist married to um, the guy who mops the floors at uh, the Waffle House at closed, but my God, if you were in there at one o'clock in the morning, liquored up, and you saw some girl mopping the floors who was the best looking girl you'd ever seen, you'd marry her in a second. So the women dentists, they marry up, they make 10000 a month, and a lot of them just say, you know what, my husband's an oral surgeon, banker, he's a finance guy, he's a physician, he's a lawyer, whatever. Um, I want to do the dental thing, but I don't want to do 
all this stuff. I don't want to figure out supply procurement and marketing and advertising and and try to lead a team. You know, uh, you know, a lot of these people say I I don't want to lead a team of five people and I, I, they just don't want to do it. It's preference. It's not right or wrong. Right or wrong is in religion. In science, it's not right or wrong. It's a trade off. Well, here's the advantage and here's the disadvantage. You know, it's like up, down, left, right, forward, back. What are your trade-offs? And the trade-offs are that half of you are going to end up in a DSO in the next generation. Now, they've already given up the rural because they can't get doctors out there. And the DSO offices they have out there in the rural on any given day, 10% of them don't even have a doc in the box. They're not doing that because you come out of school single and the number one drive of a, of a species is to mix gametes with another primate and you're not going to go to Eloy with a thousand people when you could go to Phoenix with a metro of 3.8 million to find a mate for life uh, like ducks. Uh, ducks uh, pick one person mate for life. Your, your odds aren't very good in Eloy. So you're going to go to the big city. So the DSOs have already given you the whole rule and that might be all you get. That might be all you get because you don't know your numbers. So, you know, I use Peachtree. That's very exciting. And Sage, uh, um, which bought Peachtree, they're out of London, and they're finally getting on board because so many people look at the dental industry, and it's literally ridiculous, isn't it? It's, it's a cottage industry. And a cottage industry is when nobody owns 1% of the market. When you go to Walmart and you see 60,000 SKUs, did you know like 80% of them come from nine companies? I mean, that's a mature market. You look at autos. Yeah. When Lee Iacocca had his one great idea of the minivan, he only had that year. The next year, all other 10 world partners rolled out the minivan. Okay. That's a competitive industry. We're in a cottage industry where not one person has 1% of the market. And with 200,000 uh, dentists licensed, 150,000, 32 hours a week or more, general dentists, 30,000, 32 hours a week or more, especially. So it's about 180,000. They're in about 187,000 offices. Let's not be rude. Let's just make it easy math. There's 200,000 dentists in America. There's 2 million dentists around the world. And um, half of you, um, the, the choice is yours. You want to give give orders? Or take orders. If you want to give orders, you got to know your numbers. And I don't care what you believe is right or wrong. And I don't care about all your pontificating. I want to see the math. And if you don't have math, if you just want to sit on the couch and do shots of Jameson and, and bullshit all night, I'll do it if you're playing music from the 70s. None of, you know, they haven't made one good song past the year 2000. Uh, my four boys are living proof of that. They always try to turn me on to this stuff. But when I go to their house and I get there, it's so cool. You know, you go into the back, you garage, whatever. Yeah, they're jamming out to 70s music. I just, they got the police going and the Rolling Stones. And I, I never, I never, ever walk in on them and hear some baloney from the 2000s and on. But, dude, look, know your numbers or get a job. Fair enough? Is that pretty much it, Dan? Know your numbers or get a job? Because if you that don't know your nice. numbers, your job is fleeting and it'll be gone. Okay. Hopefully we can help people know those numbers. That's that's what we're here for. Yep, I know it. And uh, thanks so much for um, coming on the show. And I hope you uh, uh, you and um, um, log on to Dental Town where I posted that on a thread. And I'm going to post that podcast on there. And we put it on the um, the podcast section. By the way, I want to tell you the, the podcast section. Um, we're up to... Um, 75 dental podcasts on Dental Town. Now I got the data. Um, there's 275,000 dentists registered on the website, but 70,000 have downloaded the app. And um, it's not, you know, it's not just my my show. I mean, it's all these shows. I mean, it's DG Connect. It's the Productive Dentistry with Bob Beard. It's uh, the Operatory Podcast, uh, the Dentist freedom blueprint the wealth ability show by an accountant he used to be my accountant until he got so big and famous and rich he, he um he was too big for us um we got um we got a podcast actually called the deals for dentists It's actually a supply dental supply back in deal mode that we just talked about it's not um how warren buffett would do it um we got the everyday practices podcast toothonomics love that one behind the smiles with gina dorfman oh my god if you're if you're in dental kindergarten school and you're a female and you want a female role model if gina dorfman i mean that girl i mean she is amazing i mean her office uh, Musing with Sari, the Jaw Law podcast for staying out of court, the dental experience. 
you know, there's just a ton of them on there. But uh, man, Dan the man, thanks for coming on the show. I hope you um, post on Dental Town, uh, answer their questions, and uh, best yeah. of luck making my homies be able to compete with the big boys at the DSOs. Looking forward to, to being part of the community as, as we grow and uh, get to know more dentists. So uh, thank you so much, Howard. It was a blast. Final question. Tell me about the, why is your Twitter name Indy? Indy, well, it, uh, I'm Indy born, Traub. And, born and bred in Indianapolis. I'm a, I'm a diehard IndyCar fan, the best, uh, best motorsports in the world. And just remember, every Memorial Day, you'll find me at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That's, that's, a heaven, that's heaven on earth for me. I've always that's the that's one thing I've never done, but I'll tell you what. Come on, um, I, I'll do it. Um, you got um um. I mean, my gosh. Um, and and thank you, thank you so much. I got twenty seven thousand four hundred followers on Twitter now. Now, Grant, them them are older dentists. Um, um, the young ones are all on Instagram where I have like 20,000 followers, but, uh, uh, my gosh, um, we'll tweet this out, uh, to our, uh, 27,000, uh, followers on Twitter. Thank you for that. And we'll, um, we'll, um, tag you as, uh, Indy Traub and, um, and, uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Howard. Real pleasure. Looking forward to continuing to interact with you. And someday I am going to try to hit you up to help me get some tickets at Indy 500. I, I want to see that someday. Hey, there, there's always room. You got, you got 250,000 of your closest friends. There's always room for one more. All right, buddy. Have a great day. You too. Thanks, Howard.